In this video, let us continue sequential pattern mining with some examples. So, if you remember this table from last video, uh, we computed I frequency mean and S support. Try to understand this uh, in bit detail. Okay. So, what is I frequency, what is S support? It is very important to understand these two values. Consider you have 60 students and uh, you identified patterns. The patterns can be just a single action. Okay. Um, there might be an action called read. It might have occurred, uh, single action can be unary action also can be a pattern. Okay. It might have occurred say um, for uh, suppose you have only um, 4 students consider that. It might have occurred 100 times, 20 times, 15 and um, say 35 times. So, the S support will be like a 4 because 4 out of 4 uh, S support value is 1. Okay, one um, single item can be also a pattern, but uh, this is just the action distribution. You can just plot it. Uh, each actions, the frequency it occurred in a in a plot in descriptive analysis, you might be able to get it. So don't consider the single action as a pattern uh, for your analysis, but it can be a pattern. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Don't avoid the single actions. When you apply any pattern mining algorithm in a sequence of actions on your data. Uh, it tries to give you the single action pattern also, but you can ignore them because these are the simple distribution of uh, how many times this particular action occurred on each student data, which can be computed from the descriptive analytics if you know how to count the actions, individual actions in each sequence. Let us say the second action, say read to quiz, it occurred 5307, some values. So, it occurred for 3 students which means 3 by 4 um, 0.75. So, you have to understand, um, excuse me, it occurred to 3 students. So, it is 3 by 4, it is 0.75, right. And uh, this value will indicate uh, how many students have this particular pattern, whether this pattern is important or not. For example, if I am uh, identified a pattern, uh, say quiz to read, okay, if I have a quiz to read and it occurred one student 20 times uh, 0, 0, 0. It occurred 20 times, it is very interesting, but only one student have it. Do you want to consider this pattern quiz to read in your analysis? That will be defined by the S support. Okay. So, when we run a pattern mining algorithm on a sequence of data, it tries to give all the possible combination of patterns like from a single action, action combined with the other action, the lot of numbers gonna come. Okay, which pattern we should use for our inferences that will be decided by these two metrics. Why these two metrics? Just to pick the right pattern to make the inferences. This tells you more about the patterns, number of times it occurred, how many students it got it. That is what these two metrics is, very simple metrics. Now, the idea is uh, if, if you want to consider the patterns which occur at least 80 percent of students, then you can pick a S support value is greater than or equal to 0.8. Suppose you have 60 students and you want to consider the patterns which occur only um, suppose consider you have 60 students and you want to consider the patterns that are occurred for more than 80 percent of students in your class. You do not care about the other patterns because there will be too many patterns you are coming out from your pattern mining algorithm which means you have to pick the right uh, S value. So, we usually keep uh, 0.6 or 0.5 based on number of students. If number of students is too high, number of combination of patterns are too high, we will uh, reduce it. Uh, we will not keep 0.5, we will keep 0.8. But if the students is only 30 students and the combination of actions is not too much, you are not making any inference, you can go down to 0.6 or 0.5. Okay? And this is what S support tells you. What I frequency tells you is that. Uh, whether this metric will tell you uh, whether this pattern is evenly distributed across all students or not, whether you should consider this particular pattern for uh, uh, for analysis or inferences. 
combination of I frequency and S uh, value will tell you which to pick it. Okay. Let us look at that uh, some activities to make you understand this too. Um, there are lot of tools to identify patterns, uh, we will uh, give you one tool uh, just a python script uh, one of our TA created, we will share the tool, we will tell you how to use the tool to identify patterns if you have sequence of actions, arrange it in the certain format, the format is what we saw in a previous example. So, but this tool cannot be used for the gaps in the actions. Uh, for for example, some might be interested to uh, identify the um, uh, patterns with the one uh, gap read uh, quiz video. I am interested in patterns which are occurring immediately read quiz, also I am interested in a pattern which occur like a, with a gap of one action like a, how many times read to video occurred should include also immediate occurrence also with a gap of one more uh, action in between. Just to avoid, uh, the, it might be a noise, no? this action is like the student wanted to really watch the video but I clicked some, uh, uh, went to quiz but immediately went back to video. If you want to consider this kind of gap also, this tool will not help. If you want to uh, do consider that, we might have to create a new tool something like that. But there are other tools available uh, which we used in our uh, research. So, if you are interested, I will going to discuss a paper, you can look at the paper and uh, use that tool. Okay. So, this pattern mining uh, is not easy, it is computationally really uh, costly in the sense it takes a lot of computational power if you want to identify all the patterns. Uh, it uses something like uh, take the first action read, it combine it all other actions like a breadth and deep search happens. So, I do not want to go into that instead uh, the spam algorithm you created by this, uh, this particular site discussed in the site is actually helping you to identify the pattern mining in a less computation costly. So, if you want to know about uh, sequential pattern mining, how the algorithm works again, you can use check this particular page and read about it. But in this uh, course, we will give you the tool to identify patterns from the sequence of actions. We want you to um, understand what this particular tool gives you, what is high frequency means or whether you can compute the high frequency or I uh, frequency mean or I standard deviation or S support what these two metric means, we want you to understand that is why I was trying to teach what is the input to this pattern mining tool and what is the output metrics which can be displayed, which can be used for analysis. If you want to know how this tool works, go and read this spam. Okay. That is a simple activity. Uh, in this activity, uh, consider there are 5 students uh, n equal to 5 and I frequency mean that is average is 5. And uh, so high frequency standard deviation is 6.9 and S support is 0.8. Uh, given these two metrics like high frequency mean and S support and standard deviation and equal to 5, how many students have pattern read to quiz? The pattern is read to quiz. How many students have pattern read to quiz? Um, pass the video, answer this question, then uh, assume the video to continue. So, it is simple uh, because I said S support equal to uh, 0.8 which actually tells how many students have it. S support is the column and we said how many students have it. How many students have the pattern is basically 0.8 which means n equal to 5 it is simple right. So, S support is 0.8 which means number of students divided by total n, if we know n equal to 5, what is x? So, x by 5, so x equal to 4, so 4 students have this particular thing, that is it is simple. Let us see a bit tricky activity, same uh, matrix and uh, what does standard deviation 6.9 mean? Okay. We know I frequency mean, but what does the 6.9 means? Is it good, bad? What is this particular thing means? Think about it. Uh, list down your answers, uh, then rest in the video to continue. It tells the data is skewed, okay? Because mean is five and 6.9 standard deviation means the data is definitely skewed. Uh, what is mean and standard deviation in a general plot? You know, it's, you know, we might know that. See, uh, in a general plot, the mean is five, but it 
it may not be like this, it may be even more flatter, but I am just saying it is skewed, okay? it is kind of a skew, it is not, it's not the, the perfect curve or something like that, which means uh, standard deviation more than means kind of a skewed. Uh, so, that is why I said we should use median instead of a mean, but let us see how it goes. Uh, the possible that uh, most students have pattern only once. Um, there are five students, we found out there are only four students have this particular pattern. So, the mean computed is out of four students. So, the I frequency mean, uh, the I frequency of 5 uh, for four students, right, it is 5, which means uh, four student it occurred 20 times, okay. This pattern occurred 20 times for all students together, right, because 20 by 4 will be 5, because we have 4 students, that is why if you can see mean comes in. Now, consider uh, if the standard deviation is really high, but then there might be chance that uh, 3 students had pattern only once and 1 student had pattern around 17 times, it is possible. It is just one possible uh, combination to get this particular standard deviation and mean. Uh, so, the altogether it is uh, it's, uh, a 20, so I mean is good. So, when you look at the I frequency also check the standard deviation, okay. The standard deviation tells you a better meaning uh, whether it is skewed, where the data is or better use the median value. Median value might be like uh, 1, right. So, it is not a point uh, 117. So, now if you want to uh, rank the patterns, okay, we have to pick the pattern which is which occurred more times. Okay. Last, uh, in the last video, we saw what is the S support means, S support 0.8 or 0.6 means. Now, I frequency median or I frequency mean plus standard duration will tell you a better story. The story is, suppose there is a pattern lead to quiz to read and uh, read to watch video, um, something like that. If you have I median, it occurred 2, it occurred 7, it occurred 3 times and all of them are above 0 0.8 S yes, support 1 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.8 something like that. We just filtered all the uh, patterns below 0 0.8 S yes, support out of this, only we consider the patterns which are above 0 0.8 S yes, support. Now, if I want to order, I want to say this particular pattern is more interesting because this pattern occurred to 80 percent of students, also it occurred more number of times in each student, like almost all the students would have got 7 times this pattern, okay. So, if you take the median, if you say mean, it is also average and you got to consider standard deviation. Be careful if you take a mean, uh, look at the standard deviation. If you consider median, you can consider this pattern might have occurred uh, 7 times for each student. So, this pattern is more important compared to this pattern. This pattern has also occurred for all students, but only occurred twice. So, this is maybe a strategy all your students will be trying to do. Your students might be always trying to take the quiz and read, quiz and read, might be some strategy students are coming up with. So, that you have to consider. Hope you understood what is the meaning of uh, S support and I frequency. Uh, Let us look at uh, one example uh, of using uh, pattern mining for analysis and uh, this is a, a paper uh, published in uh, uh, CSCW in 2018. Uh, Let us look at the paper. So, in this paper, the, the authors used a system called Brady's brain. It has set of actions so like the reading action, the student can read and they can add a notes or take a look at the notes, maybe notes action and they can add a concepts because in this particular thing they are um, creating a concept map, uh, they have to add a concepts and links between it. So, they are saying adding a concepts, adding a link or asking help from the Betty or the other agent or they can take quiz or look at the quiz they taken, they can ask for explanation and convert meter. So, consider they have a set of 8 or 9 actions identified from their learning environment. No need to understand that all this their own uh, set of actions why, but let us consider they have identified 8 set of unique actions in the learning environment. What they did is if they run a pattern mining, so, they grouped the students into two groups, uh, they might, they ran a study on a collaborative and individual. So, they grouped the, uh, 
they group the students into two groups. So, for example, this is uh, this is a group called uh, collaborative group, this is the individual group. What they did, they identified a pattern, quiz taken, then they removed particular uh, effective link and they again the quiz taken. So, that particular pattern occurred uh, in high frequency mean uh, is 3.61 and the 3.35 standard deviation, but it occurred only 1, 1.63 frequency for uh, students in um, uh, say students in uh, individual group, but uh, there is a standard deviation. So, like that they are uh, trying to plot the uh, important patterns from the data, okay. this is the table. So, if you want to know how they use these two patterns and the values of high frequency and near support, uh, read a paper a bit, uh, then you will understand that better. So, that is the example paper uh, where you can check how um, researchers are using uh, the pattern mining matrices to make inferences. So, in this video we saw what is high frequency and S support in detail also please check the paper if you get time um, that is also kind of used for uh, one of the questions in assignment. Okay. So, it is not that the paper reading is optional, we expect you to read the papers and understand why that particular matrix is used, is it correct, think about it and uh, this will help you to start with how to read the research papers in learning analytics. So, this video is talked about high frequency NS support, uh, next video we will talk about uh, application of SPM. Thank you.